Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to your last video lecture of the semester. Uh, today we've only got three things to talk about, the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Inca. So, I'll start with the Mayans. Uh, the Mayans, they existed in what is today southern Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, that area. And they lasted from about 1500 BC to about 1580. <laughs> Um, descendants of the Mayans do still exist today, but um, they've kind of mixed in with traditional cultures in Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras. The Mayans are led by powerful kings known as snake kings. Uh, they um, have an economy that's based on farming, primarily, and we didn't even know that the Mayans existed until 1839. Uh, there were some ruins discovered in Honduras, and once researchers started looking around, they found more and more of these cities, and they were all built the same, and then we figured out, hey, there's a civilization that was here. Uh, they were at their strongest between 200 and 900 AD, and the largest structures are temples and pyramids, and we're pretty sure they used those for religious purposes. Uh, their religion, by the way, was polytheistic. Uh, they had priests that practiced sacrifices. They had many different gods. And they were able to create calendars that were accurate. Uh, a couple years ago, there was this idea that the world was going to end because the Mayan calendar ended. But in reality, that wasn't true. The Mayans just didn't think they were going to be alive anymore, so they didn't bother continuing with a new calendar cycle. But they would base their cycle on the sun. Their calendar had 365 days. That probably sounds familiar. Uh, they also created this counting system where they recognized the idea of zero. Now today, zero, oh, that just means nothing. But at one point in time, the concept or the idea of zero had never been invented. And the Mayans were really the first one to do that. The Mayans also created this hieroglyphic way to write. It's in no way related to Egyptian hieroglyphics, but their hieroglyphics were discovered also in 1839 when the temple in the capital city of Copan was discovered. They found 63 stairs with a bunch of different glyphs on them out in these glyphs named every ruler that had existed up to the time that temple was built and we were able to translate that and now for the most part Mayan writing is translatable much like Egyptian hieroglyphics are. Um, they also had a game called, called uh, Poke to Poke. I didn't put it on the slide because it's not going to be on the final exam. But Poke to Poke was a ball game where you had to get a little rubber ball through a hoop but you couldn't use your arms, you couldn't use your legs. Um, you just had to use any other part of your body, no hands, no feet. Uh, there are still examples of those poke-to-poke -poke -poke, uh, courts still around today. Uh, unfortunately, the, the winners were good. The winners of the poke-to-poke -poke game got clothing and jewelry as a reward, but the losers were considered evil, and they often became the sacrifices to the uh, gods. Now, whatever happened to the Mayans, we don't 100% know. Um, the latest uh, science says it's probably a man-made drought. Uh, most likely they cut down so many trees that they changed the, the environment and it stopped raining. Alright, the Aztecs. For the Aztecs, uh, they existed in what is today central Mexico and they're really 1400 or so until about 1520. They have this emperor that is powerful, he's seen as a god. Uh, their economy is based on agriculture, but it's also based on warfare. Um, the Aztecs, they would conquer their smaller surrounding cities and force them to become part of their culture. Their largest city was called Tenochtitlan. Uh, at its biggest, we estimate it probably had about 200,000 people. And at its largest, we think that the Aztecs probably had about 5 million people in their civilization. They have big temples. 
uh, big pyramids. Um, priests do human sacrifices to keep their gods happy. It's a polytheistic religion. Uh, some of their gods are uh, Quetzalcoatl, and I think it's uh, called Huitzilcoatl. I don't speak Aztec, so that's the best I can do. But they're not important for the test either. Um, their capital city, Tenochtitlan, is today the site of Mexico City, where Mexico City is today used to be a lake called Lake Texacoco. And the capital city of the Aztecs was built on these floating rafts called Chinampas. And they would put farming on these rafts, they would build houses on these rafts, and as the city got bigger and bigger, they finally drained the lake. Now what happens to the Aztecs? Well, uh, Cortes, the Spanish conquistador, arrives in 1519 and meets with the Aztec emperor. Hopefully you read that, that article about the first meeting between the two, and you can see it goes kind of weird. Uh, Montezuma says, welcome, I've been keeping your throne ready for you. Cortes says, thanks, we're friends now. Um, what happens there is the Aztecs, they have this premonition, this, this story that their gods would return from the sea. Cortes comes from the sea, he's wearing nice, nice shiny armor, he's wearing uh, bright, shiny clothing they've never seen. He's riding a horse, and so they, Montezuma and the Aztecs think that Cortes is their god. Well, Cortes is going to find allies from some local native groups because there aren't many people that like the Aztecs. And within about a year, with the help of smallpox and these local native groups, Cortes is going to uh, arrest or kidnap Montezuma, send him back to Spain, kill him, and then defeat the Aztecs. Now finally, we've got the Inca, and the Inca are probably the most powerful of these three. The Inca, they lived in South America from about 1200 to 1535, and they stretched all the way from what is today Colombia down to what is today northern Chile, and they lived mostly in the Andes Mountains. They have an emperor, the emperor's name is Sapa Inca, and that's where the name Inca comes from. They, just like the Aztecs, have a, an economy based on agriculture and warfare. Also a polytheistic religion, uh, they looked to the sun, they had a sun god who was their most important, and they also have human sacrifice. Now what I think is really cool about the Inca is they're great builders. Uh, they built gigantic buildings that are made out of stone, they're almost perfect, but they don't use any concrete, them. they don't use any mortar. They can cut their stones so well that they just stick together and stay. They're also known for building this road that stretched the entire length of their, their uh, kingdom. It was over 24,000, almost 25,000 miles long. It was known as the, uh, the King's Road or the Sapa Road. You could only travel on it if you had permission. And if you were caught on the road without permission, they could kill you. Another really cool thing about the Inca, there's evidence of advanced medicine. We have found Inca skulls with holes in them that show that they did brain surgeries. And forensic evidence shows that these brain surgeries were successful. Now, what happens to the, to the Inca? Another Spanish conquistador, uh, Francisco Pizarro, shows up in 1531. The Inca are in the middle of a civil war. Two brothers are fighting over control of the kingdom after their dad has just died. And uh, Pizarro is going to use the civil war. He's going to side with one for over the other brother. And then a smallpox outbreak is going to uh, weaken the Inca to the point that Pizarro can completely destroy them. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just realized for the road, it's not 24,800 should be 2,480, I added an extra zero, but the road was over 24 feet wide, so it, it was very wide, it was easy for people to pass on it, and there were runners on the road who would be able to travel just long enough that uh, they could pass on the message to another runner, and the runners were set apart just far enough where the, the runners could go full speed at all times. 
All right, so that gives you what you need to know about those three empires. Uh, some final notes for you. Number one, good luck on your final exam. It's been a weird semester. I uh, hope I see some of you soon in another class. Thank you for putting up with this. Thank you for being adaptive to our needs and your needs. And I hope that these video lectures helped a little bit. Also, if you have any comments on what I can do to make these better for the summer, uh, let me know so I can try to do that and help out those students. Consider it paying it forward, if you will. And then finally, your, mid, your, your final exam, your reflection number four, and your museum review. I'm going to make all of those due on the same day, which will be Sunday night, which is May 3rd. So your final exam, your museum review, and your last reflection paper all due on the 3rd, which is Sunday. Now you might be looking for the secret word. There's not one this week, so I apologize for tricking you and making you listen to the whole thing. But once again, good luck. If you need anything, email me, and I will help you in any way I can. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.